everybody, welcome back to Northern Lions Challenge Runs in the Binding of Isaac. We've got a very interesting Greek mythology themed run today, courtesy of YouTube user Verdrac9, and I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. But in any case, this run is called the Minotaur. There's some interesting conditions here, some that we haven't dealt with before. Uh, basically, the crux of this run, it's based on the myth of Theseus and the Minotaur from Greek mythology. You can look that up if you're not familiar with it, because I would probably do a woefully inadequate job of explaining what that myth is all about. Plus, it's been a long time since I was in 11th grade history class. In any case, basically we are playing as a half-man, half-bull. I believe, unless we're meant to be role-playing Theseus, the man who kills the half-man, half-bull, I have no idea. I think we're supposed to be the bull, though, because we have items like Loki's horns, which gives us, you know, Loki's horns. Uh, the mark, which also gave us horns, or sorry, pentagram also gave us horns. But we also have the mark, we have uh, toothpicks, and we have meat. So we've created a pretty horrifying looking character here. Uh, but the crux of this run, the, the, what makes it so Minotaur-esque, if you will, is that every floor is going to have Curse of the Labyrinth on it, which means that uh, every floor is going to be twice as large as your average floor. Because, again, big part of that myth is that Theseus fights the Minotaur in a labyrinth, which is basically a big maze. In any case, uh, we should take these pills first. Now, there were no conditions listed apart from Curse of the Labyrinth being, you know, ticked off in Cheat Engine and these starting items. Pill number one is bad gas. Uh, but I'm gonna add my own conditions. Pill number two is... Tears up. That's actually fantastic. Uh, and I'm gonna go with my standard, uh, you know, no item rooms kind of condition for this run. Uh, but boss rooms and shops, we'll say, are okay. The reason I'm saying no item rooms is because we are, like, super powerful already. I mean, you can see that for the first floor, uh, you know, playing as Isaac, we already have a little bit of extra health compared to uh, what we normally start as. I think that came from meat. We also have insanely huge tiers upgrades thanks to Loki's horns and the toothpicks, of course. Uh, and better damage as a result of Pentagram and the Mark, which also gives us tiers up, I believe. So, you know, from a damage perspective, we're doing really well right now. Probably not well enough to uh, beat the entire game. Uh, but certainly well enough to put us in a very good position, especially on these early floors moving forwards. And I'm hoping this is going to be the run. You know, we didn't get our groove back necessarily uh, in earlier videos. We got close. But I'm starting to feel like my Isaac strength is returning to me, and this could be the run that makes it all happen. In any case, we have gone through basically this entire floor uh, without finding these boss rooms yet. So let's move onwards. As for the D6, uh, it's probably fair to say that we won't be allowed to use the D6, but I can pick up another spacebar item in the future. That's the compensation there. Again, we're- I'm just- I'm doing it on the fly here, as Bill O'Reilly would be misquoted in saying, um, we're gonna do it live. I'll write it. We are actually writing the story live, technically, here, if you think about it, man. The story of life, he said, as a rainbow exploded above his head in a flourish. That room literally just has nothing in it? That was crazy. It's a dead end, so it's got like only one connection to one other room. Uh, beyond that, no fire, no poop, no items, no enemies. That is a, a unusual occurrence in Isaac, shall we say. So I like the uh, this run right here because it's pretty elegant. It's a little bit unusual in that we're actually like abusing curses for once. Not abusing, but I guess utilizing curses. Uh, and beyond that, it's, it kind of starts us pretty powerful, which is something that I enjoy. Uh, that was bad damage on my part, but we're gonna be totally fine here on this Larry Jr. fight, provided I stop being such a little dingus here. There we go, he's gonna die. And I'm gonna be hoping for, you know, deals with the devil are totally on the table, Mom's Night Brimstone, stuff like that. Uh, I'm gonna be hoping for, it's not, I mean, it's not like a Minotaur actually shot tears, assuming a Minotaur actually existed. Speed upgrade is something, I'm not too psyched about it, but uh, we'll take it. And then I will replenish my health outside. Uh, but yeah, deals with the devil are totally on the table, so HP upgrades would be fantastic as well. We're gonna be fighting Gemini, which is, you know, not necessarily ideal, but uh, I don't mind fighting Gemini. It basically means that all possible items uh, are on the table, except for character-specific items like Little Steven and, you know, Steve, uh, Q, Meat, etc, etc. Which is good, because I would rather get, uh, you know, some kind of HP upgrade as opposed to picking up maybe a damage upgrade, which is not that essential. Damage upgrades, of course, always worthwhile, and I, you know, I don't have the opportunity to reroll it regardless. Uh, that being said, I feel like an HP upgrade would just make me a little bit more consistent moving forward. Now, I'm a little bit concerned about these pills. We've had, this is a tears upgrade, I believe, so that's okay. Coin purse is always a, a crapshoot when you're playing as Isaac. This one is health down, not psyched about that. Balls of steel, somewhat compensation, and bad gas. What's our other? We have the strength card. I think the strength card is going to be substantially better than the uh, bad gas pill, so let's move onwards with this. So, in the end, we ended up getting a speed upgrade, but also an HP downgrade and a tears upgrade. Is that a fair trade? Good question. For those of you wondering, by the way, you can uh, set curses in the cheat engine 
which is what I've done here. There is a curses tab, at least on the table that I'm using. The one that is Wrath of the Lamb, update, or updated for Wrath of the Lamb. So I can make every floor uh, no curse, I can make every floor curse of the Labyrinth, curse of the Lost, etc, etc. Might as well open this golden chest here. Uh, we ended up picking up two cents out of it, which is a terrible deal in my opinion. But, you know, that's one of the few ways, not necessarily few, but one of the ways that I can get items on this run is by, via golden chest, uh, since I can't go to item rooms. So, hopefully we'll find our boss room soon. We'll be able to, uh, boss rooms I suppose, we'll be able to leave this floor. Uh, could look for secret rooms, which again is is an excellent way for me to get items. Mostly I kind of want to deal with the devil uh, and a good spacebar item though. We will pick up this penny because at some point the shop is going to be worthwhile. Uh, we've reached a dead end, which might actually be a blessing in disguise. Maybe we get a chance to pick up some extra pills or uh, golden chests. Mob trap room might pay out with something like a skeleton key, you never know. We did get another key though, so... Uh, probably gonna spend that on a shop eventually if we ever earn enough money, but for now we're probably just gonna roll with that as a golden chest opener, if you will. So we're already pretty quick here as a result of our upgrades, so gotta be very careful not to walk on the spikes. Uh, let's head down and to the right. Thank god it's caves, by the way. You know, with these labyrinthine floors, it makes it more important- that's bad gas, I believe. Um, with these labyrinthine- labyrinthine floors, uh, it makes it more pressing, I'd say, or more- advantageous to get not uh, the more difficult floors, if that makes any sense at all. I'm gonna spend a little money here. We can get trinkets or, uh, well, I guess tarot cards, or we could pick up maybe a uh, couple of spirit hearts as a result of this. But let's just play till we get down to five cents. I'm gonna take the tower card with me. Uh, if we find our first boss room, that might be, you know, worth using here. Otherwise, I can just use it on a room to try to, uh, I don't know, use a bomb to like open up a bridge or something so we can pick up an item. We don't really want that half heart just yet. This might be the perfect opportunity to use this tower card actually. Now it's just hide out in the corner. So it killed Larry Jr., gave us a bomb as well, and gave us a chance to get this golden chest which has the Emperor card, which we will take with us uh, because I can use that on a later floor. Probably we're going to be looking to use that one on the womb now. Uh, I do want to pick up this tarot card. Uh, we're going to be looking to use that on the womb now because uh, on the womb that's gonna be like our last XL floor. Obviously, we can't have like a um, what's the best way of putting it? We can't have a cathedral XL, which was just like two cathedral floors and two Isaac boss fights stacked on top of one another. That would be pretty darn silly. More money. Uh, sadly, no keys. But let's uh, fight Gertie here, and we are gonna pop our. This is a regular Gertie. I'm just I'm losing my train of thought, but at the same time, I also need to focus on taking these dudes out. I hate this layout. Especially with regular Gertie, because it can shoot bullets at us, obviously. Uh, but at the same time, we also have to worry about these fucking nubs on the side, which are going to be pains in the ass to kill as well. On the bright side, we are doing insane damage to Gertie right now. Some of the best uh, damage I think I've done to Gertie in a long fucking time. At least considering we're fighting it on only the third floor. Again, these nubs are going to be a real pain in the ass. But okay, he's dead. We get an HP upgrade. And we definitely want to go back and get that Emperor card before we do anything else. Now, I think I could realistically earn a deal with the Devil fairly easily here, as long as I don't get hit 20 times. Uh, we are going to be a little bit weaker than we were on the Gertie fight, because we don't have the Strength card. But otherwise, I, I don't foresee anything really stopping us uh, on the next floor. And I don't, you know, we're probably fine to fight Mom as well. It's when we get down to the womb that things are going to be a little bit trickier, I think. So we're fighting Chubb. Uh, it's a, a very quick version of Chubb, which means, I think, it, it, to compensate for that, he has a lower HP which is fine by me. So I'm just gonna try to abuse a, a perceived range advantage, if you will. And we should be able to kill him as quickly as possible. Now, I worry about, uh, the, the main thing with this Chubb fight is that it seems like he's, like, less heavy than your standard Chubb, which actually means he's affected more uh, by your shots. So you can sometimes, like, shoot him into you if he's chasing you and then you dodge, uh, just by kind of shooting him off-center, which is annoying as hell. So we'll try to avoid that, but in the meantime, probably two hits left. Only one hit left, actually. We take another HP upgrade. Uh, we get another Spirit Heart. And we do get a deal with the Devil, which contains Guppy's Paw and Spirit of the Night. Let me think about this for a second. I definitely want Spirit of the Night. Do I want to roll entirely with Guppy's Paw? It would cost me three Spirit Hearts, which would only give me seven overall. So, like, seven Spirit Hearts. Blah. Ten spirit hearts, but I don't really have. Okay, okay, okay. Let me think about this. I think we take Spirit of the Night. That's that's a no-brainer. Then we take Guppy's Paw, and we abuse it. But we don't go back with the D6. We hold on to Guppy's Paw, and we carry it with us. Obviously, my hope for this is that we'll get the Polaroid soon, which we will when we beat Mom. Uh, and then we'll get the permanent invincibility from the Polaroid, but in order to make this run work now, we definitely have to get more HP upgrades in order to kind of continually get 
uh, Spirit Hearts coming in. Spirit of the Night was a no-brainer. Guppy's Paw is probably uh, where I'm going to fail or succeed greatly on this run. So far, uh, it could go either way. Most of the time, I would much prefer to have uh, more Spirit Hearts at this time. I mean, uh, of course, you know, I could have not taken Spirit of the Night. I'm just waiting for this goddamn glitch to figure itself out. Uh, I could have not taken Spirit of the Night and then had six extra Spirit Hearts. But, at the same time, uh, I feel like that would have been uh, a little bit short-sighted. In the meantime here, we're dealing with some kind of crazy white glitch. Not a, a white Goodman glitch or a Barry White glitch. Just, uh, sadly, like a pure white screen here uh, and it doesn't appear to be doing anything better for us so I hope that I didn't crash the game at which you know it would not surprise me given the kind of uh, track record I have with cheat engine if it just crashed the game here but maybe I can load into cheat engine and uncheck this for now hey that actually seems to have uh, helped us out here we do still oh it's not okay so I, I guess I defied the challenge run there, but in doing so, I also saved the game. So uh, hopefully, you know, you'll forgive me for that. <laughs> I didn't mean to shit on the challenge run, but I also, you know, wanted to continue the game and not have to scrap this entire recording, if that makes sense. So we are on Necropolis 1. Uh, we won't be dealing with XL floors anymore, because, you know, Cheat Engine just has a kind of a tendency to be unreliable uh, when you're messing around with factors that perhaps you're not 100% familiar with. So again, I apologize that we're losing this Curse of the Labyrinth stuff, but the challenge run still stands, I feel, uh, because we've been adhering to a certain set of principles so far. So we're going to look for our boss room. Still no item rooms, uh, still shops would be okay if I could actually get some keys. We do have enough money to possibly make it worthwhile now. And we're really going to be hoping for HP upgrades, whether those come in pill form, golden chests, boss rooms, I don't really care. Every single one. Oh, this could be it right here. It is not. It is telepills that caused me to lose the Emperor card. Don't I feel like a fool now. Now, green dude could do me a big favor and destroy one of those red nubs. Sadly, he has chosen not to. That's okay, though. Um, we will go... Oh, I really thought I was going to take damage there. We will go back and get this Emperor card because it's very important to me. And my long-term success, if we get a key, we have a golden chest that we can open now. I'm really interested to see how this run works out. Um, highly dependent on us getting kind of the right cocktail of boss room items. Either we need a lot of extra damage uh, to make this a true glass cannon style run. We already have great damage, but, uh, you know, extra damage doesn't hurt, obviously. Well, it hurts the enemy, that's kind of the point. Um, but... We need that, or we need to get some HP upgrades so we can stack up Spirit Hearts, basically, before moving onwards. Now, this should not be too difficult of a room for me, uh, but I really don't want to F with these neutral flies. I can even just... Oh my god, the neutral flies still hit me. I do have bombs I guess I can use uh, to, to do this more quickly. This should not be as difficult as it, as it has been so far, but that's okay. We lost half a Spirit Heart, traded it for a key, essentially. Let's go back down here, open up this golden chest, and hope that these blue spikes don't get in my ass. Okay, we got three bombs for that key, which is not a good deal at all. Uh, let's actually head down here, now that we're here anyway. There's our item room, which we sadly can't make good use of. I'm kind of getting trapped in the corner here, which I'm not a big fan of, and there goes another spirit heart. Okay, so we've lost, effectively, half of one HP upgrade so far, which I am not pleased about. However, hopefully, uh, you know, we, we deal with the depths on the next floor, so we won't have to worry about taking so much damage, because Necropolis, in many ways, might actually be not the hardest floor in the game, uh, but certainly, you know, substantially harder than even the Womb or Utero, in my opinion, anyway. I'm, I'm having trouble remembering the uh, exact differences between the Womb and Utero. Obviously, Utero is a pain in the ass as well, but Necropolis, for whatever reason, I guess when you can fly, it's not so bad, because you can just avoid uh, or use all these uh, gaps and chasms to your advantage, but... Uh, for the most part, I, I've had very bad experiences in Necropolis. And I'm hoping that this is not going to be a repeated one of them. Just my luck, we'll probably get, like, Pageant Boy in the shop as well. Or, sorry, Pageant Boy in the boss room. But we are at the boss room, so it might be in our best interest to just go fight right away. Just by hanging out in the center here, I should be basically immune to all these spider attacks. Which, when you put it like that, makes it sound a lot more horrifying than it might appear on screen. But yeah, deadly spider attacks. Probably something we're going to want to avoid here. I never had really a fear of spiders, uh, but what I have is a fear of people who have a fear of spiders, because people freak out, man. And I just get this, I fucking hate this boss so much. So we're going to attack the heart, 
Just like, you know, the, the Green Goblin suggested in the original Spider-Man film. I don't know if I should call it a film. The original Spider-Man movie. Original Spider-Man motion picture. Extra, extra. Now, we have to kill... Oh, my God. Okay. Let's think about this. We're going to use bombs, effectively, hopefully, uh, to, to take this guy out. I'm just going to maybe put one here and then shoot him in. This is the problem with this fight is the way it has to go down is if you don't have piercing shots or brimstone or mom's knife or anything along those lines uh, you're probably not gonna be a happy camper I'm not happy with the way I'm using bombs here but at the same time I don't wanna get hit and uh, I will get hit like crazy if I don't employ this strategy alright so we we have to fight in the old-fashioned way now uh, every hit that I take is gonna be a real goddamn disaster for me unfortunately we did and he doesn't play by the rules that the other zombie heads play by Namely, uh, he doesn't, uh, if you shoot him once in the back, wow, that actually worked out really well. Uh, two spirit arts might actually be better than an HP upgrade, considering it comes with a tears upgrade, too. Um, but yeah, what I was gonna say is that he doesn't play by the rules. Most zombie heads, when you shoot them, they continue going straight in one direction, and, uh, you know, as such, you actually have an opportunity. That was awful dodging, by the way. Uh, you actually have an opportunity to, uh, kind of make them predictable so that they're easier to hit. However, this guy, or that guy that we just fought, the Mask of Infamy, doesn't play by those rules and as such becomes very unpredictable and if you don't have cat of nine tails he is a, a big pain in the ass to deal with it's probably the only situation i can really think of where cat of nine tails is uh, an extraordinarily valuable upgrade as opposed to just a side grade or a whatever grade what is a whatever grade anyway that's got to be like a b minus i guess it depends on the context i'm gonna open up this golden chest really hoping that at some point on this run we find a golden chest that actually gives us some kind of statistical upgrade even if it's not an hp upgrade as of right now, we've only really been getting consumables, which is okay, because we do have enough uh, money to absolutely make going to the shop worthwhile here. Um, I don't know what I would want from the shop. You know, if I, at this point, we're, we're probably getting pretty close to being out of HP upgrade territory. So if I could pick up something like Blue Candle, I might be psyched about that, or Book of Revelations. But, uh, you know, it's very much up in the air. We could also just... <laughs> that was another bad dodge. Uh, we could also just end up fighting greed and, you know, basically having all of our dreams shit on, like whatever the reverse of the Make-A-Wish Foundation is. How, do, how dark do you think the Make-A-Wish Foundation could get? I'm not trying to be offensive here, because I know the Make-A-Wish Foundation does, really, you know, really great things for people who are in need. However, you know, do you think they've ever gotten a request which is like, okay, little Timmy, like, you, you're probably not going to be on this earth for too much longer. What's the one thing you want? And little Timmy's like, to see my... Enemies crushed and hear the lamentations of their women, and they're just like, oh, yeah, can we maybe just have you meet the Harlem Globetrotters instead? Uh, let's play this until we get down to 15 cents, because that will be where we will have the, the maximum money required to make good use of the shot. Actually, you know what? 20 cents? Because I would love to buy a spirit heart in the shop as well, so that was a terrible fortune teller. That being said, we can move onwards here, and we should backtrack or sidetrack this entire floor. Demon Judgment will not be playable for us, which is unfortunate. There is a golden chest here, and we have the keys necessary to make it happen. A little bit of extra money means we might get another crack at that fortune teller. Really need, like, relic or, um... Oh, that's awesome! So we get HP upgrade, that's three free spirit hearts. Uh, we really need relic or miter at this point. But in the meantime, we are going to backtrack a little bit and check out uh, our shop, which I'm presuming is going to be on the north west side of our map here that was just me bragging that finally I've learned the cardinal directions you know and I, I can even tell left from right now without holding my hand in front of me and looking for my thumb and forefinger to make the L shape on my left side but in any case we're gonna kill this guts dude he's gonna give us a single penny which seems to be pretty common for whatever reason and I really don't want to fight these guys but I think if I just hang out uh, over top of these rocks they're gonna turn around and whenever they uh, kind of turned around in the path of my shots, I will be able to hit them pretty easily. Although they seem to not really be playing by the rules right now. Actually, Loki's horns is helping me out a lot here with kind of randomly firing in other directions that I can't pay attention to all the time. Uh, Bloody Lust would be a sweet upgrade as well. I feel like I say that every single video, but that's okay. Because it's true, man. Bloody Lust would be pretty important right now. We get another key. Our shop is going to contain Book of Revelations. Okay, first things first, we definitely want to buy uh, the Spirit Heart. Now, is Book of Revelations better than Guppy's Paw? Probably. Almost certainly. I could see Guppy's Paw realistically giving us one more Spirit Heart. Um, 
Book of Revelations, I could realistically see giving us, you know, five or six over the course of the rest of the game, maybe even more. Uh, but we are going to use this Emperor card uh, at some point, so we'll skip an entire floor. I don't know. It's not the best kind of series of items that we could have at this point, and it almost guarantees that we'll be fighting war, or sorry, death on the next floor. Uh, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. Keep in mind, as, as poorly as I've been playing on, uh, you know, the kind of back half of this run so far, uh, which is probably likely going to be the first half of the run overall, but I digress, um, we are going to have permanent invincibility from the Polaroid right after this boss fight, which is not going to be a difficult one, I'm assuming. Uh, and once we get that permanent invincibility from the Polaroid, we are going to become much, much stronger. A few other things matter here. Like, it, I'm interested to see what... Um, what item we get from mom here. Obviously I'm hoping it's not an HP upgrade because if it is I can't take it. But that's worst case scenario would be this item being an HP upgrade and then me like losing out on the opportunity cost from Guppy's Paw. But even if it is an HP upgrade I'm assuming uh, that Book of Revelations is still going to be a better choice like nearly mathematically for us. It's got a nine tails just in time to probably not be useful for the rest of the game. We finally pick up our first trinket and I would say it is time for us to go down to the next floor. So far so good! And we are in Utero 1, and I kind of, I'm very tempted to just pop this Emperor card right away. Uh, but I guess to a certain extent, this is me. Come on, just... I just really worried about the green uh, bomb shooter there. Uh, to a certain extent, I guess this is me, or the game being like, Hey, motherfucker, put your money where your mouth is. You think the Uter you think Utero's not that hard, huh? Well, um, you know, I'll do, I'll do my damnedest here. So far, I think it's gone pretty well. And again, I just need to abuse Spirit of the Night, Flying plus Spectral a little bit more, I think, uh, to keep out of harm's way and also put myself in a very good offensive position against these enemies. Again, so far, so good. We have, like, our first mob trap room of the game, which is kind of surprising to get one of these so late. I guess, you know, we probably had other ones over the course of this run. Uh, I just haven't seen them because I've been bum-rushing floors as quickly as possible because item rooms and shops were not valuable until the very end, basically. Well, item rooms were never valuable, but shops not till the very end. Well, I'm not really interested in going to that mob trap room if it was a golden chest. I absolutely would have opened it. We got very lucky, and I'm very thankful that I did not use my Emperor card because we are about to fight the boss, and we found it on the first try, basically, which is pretty awesome. So, we will get Book of Revelations recharged. Wheel of Fortune, um... Sure, you know what? With four cents remaining... Just be careful. Don't accidentally pick up the tick. Uh, with four cents remaining, it seems to make sense to play uh, the fortune teller because we're not going to use that for anything else unless we come across a judgment, which we can't necessarily rely on. And with one more cent, I'm not even going to blow it up because I want to save my bombs for mom's heart, obviously. Our other tarot card is justice, which is actually going to give us another key and another two bombs and one more cent to play this guy again. Let's see what we get. You know what? Fair enough. One spirit heart for like six cents is a decent trade in my opinion. Now, I'm not super stoked about fighting Death here. Uh, he can sometimes be a pain in the ass, but at the same time, there are more difficult bosses that we could be fighting on the Utero 1, I'm sure. Even if it's just, you know, the Fallen uh, would be more difficult. I never understand the, uh, the Hourglass attack from Death, because it seems to do basically nothing to me. Like, it, it makes my shots turn white, uh, which doesn't really bother me. Maybe they go a little bit slower as well, but anyway, let's just focus on taking out death first here. I accidentally killed the horse. Horse must have much lower HP, that's the only explanation I can think of. We are, we are effectively health neutral on this fight because I uh, took a hit, but I also got a spirit heart. And one more hit should be enough to kill this dude. We'll take our single cube of meat, which is good actually! It might seem like that's not so great, uh, but getting that cube of meat is actually really important because now when we have permanent invincibility from the Polaroid, uh, we can go... You know, like, break some faces open with this cube of meat and just go stand right next to enemies, which I think is... It's more valuable than it might initially seem. Not to mention it will just give me a little bit of added defense. I know everyone was looking for the Northern Line money quote there. Uh, let's go down this time. Obviously, that's not going to be the right direction. Still... I still hate... Actually, Cat and Ninetales might be decent against uh, these bomb flies as well, because I'll hit them faster than they can approach me, hopefully. I don't know. I, I hate those vaginal silkworms or vaginal bomb flies probably more than any other enemy in the game, so. Uh, I'm just gonna focus on killing the guts first, then we'll go for the mini guts. Or, sorry, the mega guts, I guess, technically. Again, easy room. We are on utero, too, so we're not dealing with uh, the womb sadly, which would make things probably a little bit easier for us. That being said, this should be easy enough in its own right. Extra bombs gonna be useful on this Mom's Heart boss fight. Sadly, we have reached a uh, dead end here. We 
took a little bit of damage, but at the same time, we also managed to not take any more damage for the rest of the room, which, you know, if we lose a few spirit arts moving forwards here, that's okay. Hopefully we'll be able to make up for it a little bit later. Uh, and I do have enough keys, I just noticed, to uh, absolutely safely go and open all the uh, golden chests on the chest itself. Book of Revelations is ready, we just got another key, so more golden chests are certainly welcome. Uh, and this room is basically like my ideal room to be dealing with right now. Provided I can not get hit. Is this a champion, dude? He's shooting out like weird black and red shots, which I think is abnormal. There's another tiers upgrade, which I'm actually super stoked about because we are we already have a, a pretty insane rate of fire, but that's just gonna make it even better. We'd love to pick up an attack fly here against Envy. Again, that's the kind of thing that makes uh, the permanent invincibility because of the Polaroid uh, substantially better. Now, if I get, <laughs> I'm not sure if you saw, but I got Envy pretty seriously trapped in the corner there. Uh, I'm gonna try to kill that blue Envy last, which I think is vastly increases the chances of us getting uh, the attack fly. That was like the, the most recent, I think, major evolution in my Isaac play, was that realization that, you know, sometimes the, oh, sometimes the enemy that you kill last actually does have a substantial impact on what item you will get uh, when the room is over. Especially like on the chest, those rooms that have the, uh, like three mini bosses in the same room, if you kill Gluttony last, then you'll end up picking up a heart. If you kill Greed last, you'll end up picking up money. If you kill uh, Sloth last, I think you get a tarot card. I don't know. It's a weird setup. Oh, be careful. There's only one of the blue things left. And he's being a real dick about it, re getting real close to all the other uh, Envy heads. Why? It's amazing to me that this guy ended up staying so huge. Now, I'm just playing it real cool here. That attack fly could make all the difference. Probably not, but maybe. He's probably also only one hit away from death, which worries me. But, just don't fuck it up now, and we should be okay. So, last one's dead, we get an attack fly, and suddenly I am vindicated. We get another Emperor card as well. I guess I could pop the Emperor card and then, you know, fight Mom's heart, come back and try to uh, do it all over here again. Uh, we've already been there, so I guess we've reached a, a true dead end here. But actually, I'm just gonna hold on to this Emperor card, track my way to the boss the normal way, and, and hopefully make some good stuff happen that way. Okay, I've got my bearings now. We've explored, like, the entire left side of the map. Time to move upwards. Uh, and this floor might be pretty big. Uh, you know, it is... We're getting later and later into the game here, so it would not surprise me if we're dealing with a floor that is perhaps a little bit on the grand side. It might not be a labyrinth! Uh, as suggested in the initial challenge run suggestion. I don't want that, actually, believe it or not. If I had Guppy's Paw, I would still want it, but it doesn't actually matter. Uh, Book of Revelations has definitely p turned out better for us so far uh, than it would have gone if we'd gone with Guppy's Paw, because we haven't really gained any HP upgrades as a result, I think, if I remember correctly. But I do have tunnel vision when it comes to Isaac sometimes. Wishful thinking, rose-colored glasses, however you want to say it. Now... Just avoid the laser, we'll be good. I think I'm actually like health neutral, or maybe even having uh, gained some health on this floor, but sadly, uh, Gertie Jr. will almost certainly erode a little bit of that because he's a pain in the dick. And it's not even blue Gertie Jr. Blue Gertie Jr. would be fantastic because, you know, I'd probably lose a couple of spirit hearts, but I'd gain uh, one at least as well. Instead, this is a Gertie Jr. that actually creates some asshole enemies in their own right. Uh, but so far, so good, which means almost assuredly I'm about to take damage, and indeed, that's exactly how that shit went down. So we're just gonna try to abuse the fact that these guys are now... Ah, I lost two spirit hearts, gained two red hearts. Fantastic. What a waste of my time and health. And we can see our spirit hearts on the screen, which is worrying. No question about it. Let's continue moving onwards here. This bomb fly is gonna be a pain in the ass. I really, this is the kind of run where I don't have to play amazingly to do well. And by do well, I mean, you know, probably beat Isaac and at least get to the chest. Uh, but I have to not make many mistakes. I have to play at least, you know, kind of well. I, I, like, I don't have to play perfectly. I can afford to make some mistakes, uh, but those mistakes will add up pre pretty quickly. And, you know, I don't really have anything to compensate for making those mistakes except for, you know, gaining a spirit heart once every six rooms. We have teleported to a room that could take us immediately to Shoal. If that took us to the boss room, I would be uh, stoked about that, but sadly, uh, that teleportation was not really all that useful at all. So we'll just move onwards instead. I believe that's where it was. We should be seeing the boss room very, very soon. There it is indeed. And I doubt we're gonna take any damage on this room. So if we can avoid taking damage against Mom's heart, uh, then we'll pop the Emperor card in the Cathedral, and I think we have a reasonably good chance against Isaac, considering I'll have permanent invincibility because of the Polaroid. Uh, and, you know, then we're on the chest, and on the chest, anything goes. We'll be able to get four new items, and, you know, if we get Polyphemus, Mutant Spider, or something like that, we might be able to make some very good stuff happen. This is where things are gonna start to move very, very quickly for us. 
Uh, so, uh, you know, I'm pleased about that, but at the same time, I am also, you know, a little excited, a little aroused, uh, a little itchy, which I think I, I should probably see a doctor about. But, uh, you know, lots of a varying suite of emotions going through my body right now. Now, I want to stand a little bit closer to Mom's heart. Uh, because if I can get the attack fly to hit it consistently, I think it'll do more damage than most people would give it credit for. Now, we're not going good, very quickly here. This is why, uh, you know, a brimstone or mom's knife would be exceptionally valuable, but those are probably off the table at this point. We're gonna be fighting basically every boss now. I just wanna make sure again that that attack fly is getting some, uh, good work in. That was probably a waste of a bomb, considering I could kill, uh, Duke of Flies very easily just with my tears, but it's all good! drop another bomb in there. Uh, sadly, we missed with the uh, attack fly, but that's okay. Now, I can fly, so I really should not be sweating uh, the creep here, but I will do my damage to avoid Chubb. Mom's heart will probably kill Chubb by accident with those bombs anyway. Yep, I knew it, I knew it! Now, these laser bullet flies, uh, IV wed. Now, with these laser bullet flies, it's probably gonna be, like, near the end of the fight here. Couple more hits on Mom's heart, she's dead. Book of Revelations has popped. We go up to the next floor, and it's time for Boss Fight 2.0 uh, against Isaac here. And then, assuming we succeed on this, we will then get to the chest, which is gonna be uh, an interesting time for everybody. It'll be the puberty of our run, if you will. Which makes sense, I guess, given its name. Now, we're we're not hoping to take damage, but at the same time, if I do take damage, it is far from the end of the from the end of the world because fewer meat and uh, you know increased proximity to attack fly are going to allow me to do you know maybe 10% of Isaac's health every single time I get hit. We probably can't afford to just tank damage. Dodging is still going to be uh, very useful, but it's also not going to be the end of the world if we take damage. Now I do have invincibility again. You might have missed that there uh, because there is a visual glitch. Oh my god. Okay, now every time I'm getting hit. It becomes a little bit increasingly worrying. Let's just throw this bomb in there. We're gonna need a lot more health in order to uh, to take down Blue Baby reliably, would be my guess, or substantially increase damage, uh, of course. Now we're not doing super well here. Probably worse than I expected, but we are gonna reliably, or almost certainly, I should say, make it out of this Isaac fight regardless. That was not good damage. Uh, we're gonna stand close. We're gonna drop a bomb, and then we're gonna get the fuck out of there. I think I got hit again. Uh, but I just want to kind of hang back just in case I didn't. Now, uh, we, we are going to win this fight, don't get me wrong. But we're kind of in a shitty position here. I've taken a lot more damage than I originally anticipated. Uh, we are down to three spirit hearts. Down from like ten at least, maybe eleven. Uh, so we're going to really have to hope for some awesome items in the chest here. Not a good fight against Isaac, but uh, we survived at least. Homing bombs, not really what I'm interested in. Uh, dad's rights or blood rights, not really what I'm interested in. <sighs> Remote detonator, not really what I'm interested in, but, you know, the five extra bombs might make a big difference. And the holy water! So that is a pretty garbage suite of items to be getting, uh, here on the chest. Especially, I, you know, I kind of put all my eggs in that basket, not that I had other options. Uh, but at the same time, uh, we're gonna try to make this work. I don't know what would have to happen for us to have uh, a, a winnable run here. We'll have to have a goddamn great run against Blue Baby, like an incredible fight, assuming we even make it that far. Uh, beyond that, also uh, picking up as many Spirit Hearts as is humanly possible on the way, uh, and basically taking zero damage on any rooms, unless we manage to pick up, you know, ten Spirit Hearts a room or something like that. What would have saved me there? Mom's Knife, Polyphemus, they would have, it wouldn't have necessarily saved me, but they would have made things a lot easier. There I go, taking some damage. Because, you know, as you can see right now, our damage is good, you know? You saw us fight Mom's Heart. We did well enough on that. I'm probably going to die on the next room. If not this room, actually. Uh, we did well enough on that Isaac fight, damage-wise. We did well enough on the Mom's Heart boss fight. Okay, we're getting every bomb-related item right now. So we have now poison bombs that also home, and we have 18 of them. Uh, I would not be surprised if we ended up dying on this room, but what can I say? You know, we, we gave it the old college try. I certainly can't be too pissed off about my, uh... Oh, shit, be careful. I, I can't be too pissed off about our, our progress or our success on this one, because, you know, we're, we're gonna die on the chest. That's a noble place to be finishing, I guess. We could still succeed, you know, it would take a goddamn miracle, but... Uh, if we played them nine times, they might beat us eight. I can't remember her Brooks speech from Miracle. Or, you know, real life. Uh, we're gonna get out of this room, much to my surprise, unless I make a colossal mistake here towards the end. Almost played chicken with that guy. I would have lost substantially. Uh, now this room, again, is yeah, pretty likely to be it. 
In any case, it feels fitting, I guess, that Greed ended that run. But in any case, thank you for that challenge run suggestion. I've forgotten your name, but it's like Varudrac9. I hope that's close enough. But in any case, again, thank you for the challenge run suggestion. Thank you guys for watching. Continue suggesting your own, and I will see you next time.